We now move on to titrations. So when we don't know how much base is present in a solution, then we can actually figure that out by slowly adding a known acid solution to the base until the base gets neutralized. Now that neutralization point is called the equivalence point. We can then use the number of moles of the known acid that we added in order to determine how many moles of base were present in the original solution that we didn't know. This process is called an acid-base titration. Now, as it turns out, there are other kinds of titrations as well, but we will not worry about these here. So for simple titrations, the moles of acid and moles of base are equal to each other at equivalence point. Now, we will not worry about more complex titrations until a later time. The best way for me to show you how to do titration calculations, as per usual, is to look at a lecture problem. If it takes 200 milliliters of this concentration of HBr to neutralize 250 milliliters of KOH, how many moles of KOH were present in the original unknown KOH solution? And separately, if it takes 30 mils of this concentration of HCl to neutralize 400 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, then what was the concentration of the original sodium hydroxide solution? Now, in my typical manner, I'm not going to show you the answer to both of these, but I invite you to pause the video and attempt them both on your own. Then you can hit play, after which I will show you how to do part A. It turns out that there are multiple correct ways of doing this kind of problem, including using the equation that I talked about in our acid-base titration video earlier. Ma times Na times Va equals Nb times Mb times Vb. Uh, you actually don't have to use that uh, equation. I think in this case, it's probably uh, a little bit easier not to, and I'll show you why. So this equation, to begin, what I want to do is I want to write down my acid reacting with my base so that I can get an idea of what actually happens when I combine these two. So using the principles of acid-base chemistry that we talked about in an earlier video, link to in the description below, what happens when I react HBr with KOH? Well, yeah, strong acid, strong base equations react like double displacement, also called metathesis reactions. So I take my, uh, or I do a partner swap. So this H goes together with my OH, right, to form H2O or HOH in order to keep the pattern consistent. And my K goes together with my BR. So I get KBR as a byproduct. You'll notice that this equation as written is actually balanced. So it forms H2O and a salt, an inorganic ionic compound salt. Make sense? Cool. Now the question gives me this many milliliters of this concentration of HBR and then asks me to eventually get to units of moles of KOH, okay? So these are my target destination units. So given the fact that I said destination units, what do you think is gonna happen here? Yeah, we're totally gonna do this or treat this as a dimensional analysis slash unit conversion equation, which uh, principles of which I've talked about in an earlier video linked to in the description below, okay? Now whenever you're dealing with one of these situations, my counsel is, Almost always, not always, 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 but most of the time, if you're given multiple values on a problem, you're gonna start by writing down the value that has no denominator units, okay? So, how do I do that here? Well, you need to remember that molarity, or this capital M stands for molarity, which is really the same thing as moles of this specific compound, HBr, per liter of solution. So this has denominator units, it's per liter. These two values, however, do not, okay? I've just, it's just milliliters, it's not milliliters per something or milliliters per something, it's just milliliters. So I'm gonna start with one of these that has no denominator units. To be honest, you probably could do this either way by picking whichever one you wanted as long as you keep your units organized. For the sake of fun though, I'm gonna start by writing down this one, okay? Because this is the one that I know the concentration of, all right? So I'm gonna write down 200 milliliters and then to keep everything organized, I'm gonna write specifically of HBr, all right? So I've used my 200 milliliters. Now using the pattern of dimensional analysis slash unit conversion, the units in the denominator here are going to have to be something that cancel out units in the numerator of the previous term. Now you'll notice that the other values that I'm given this molarity here has units of liters in it, not milliliters. So I'm probably gonna to wanna to convert this milliliters into liters. So I'm gonna write down milliliters in the denominator here and liters in the numerator because milliliters and liters are directly relatable. I'll cancel out milliliters here of HBr, get to liters of HBr. Now, units in the denominator of the next term, yeah, they're gonna be liters and I'm gonna pull it from the HBr, right? So I've got 0.05 moles of HBr per liter. That's what this molarity number represented, okay? my liters cancel each other out. I'll put in the numbers later. Now the question asked me to eventually get to moles of KOH. I'm not there yet, I'm to moles of HBr, so I need to lay down another set of parentheses. What will the units in this denominator be? 
Yeah, they're going to be the same as the units in the numerator of the previous term. In other words, moles of HBr. Now, is it possible to directly relate moles of HBr to moles of KOH? In other words, can moles and moles touch? The answer is yes. You can always re directly relate moles of one thing to moles of another because that's what the balanced equation tells you. The implied one coefficient here, one coefficient there, one coefficient there, and one coefficient there are a mole to mole to mole to mole ratio of those substances to each other. That's what balanced equations are for. So I can directly relate moles of HBr to moles of KOH. And then I'll insert the numbers in just a moment, but you'll notice that that takes me directly to the units that I'm trying to get to, my target or destination units, moles of KOH. And in this particular case, you did not have to use that equation, NAMA VA equals NBMBVB. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but I kind of like it this way. Now all I have to do is insert numbers. So how many milliliters are there in a liter? A liter's big, you've seen a liter bottle. Milliliters are tiny. So it takes a thousand of these to go into one of these. And that's one that I require you, my university students, to memorize. Remember, the small unit has the big number next to it. The big unit has the small number next to it in order to keep those organized. Because what I'm saying is that there are a thousand of these tiny things in one big thing. So make sure you don't accidentally flip those, all right? Over here, what's the mole to mole ratio of HBr to KOH? Yeah, there's an implied one here and implied one there. So it's actually, they just react one to one, okay? You uh, plug and chug all of that in your calculator, you get the final answer of moles of KOH. And that hopefully makes sense.